Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel for another video. Today we're going to be going over carburetors and I'm going to be showing you how to install, remove, and tune your carburetor. So let's just jump right into it. Now the first question you might be asking if you are new to this and you haven't had something carbureted, uh, why do you want to upgrade your carburetor? Uh, reason one is going to be that you can get some performance gains out of it uh, and get some better throttle response, as well as you can improve your reliability with your engine and just have a better working operating carburetor that's uh, to be able to be better adjusted for your bike. So here is my 2020 Apollo RFC. Uh, this is a 125cc pit bike and I have installed the Makuni carburetor in it uh, as well with the Uni filter. I know it's kind of hard to see with the light there, but uh, yeah, today I'll be going over and showing you how to remove your stock carburetor uh, and install the Makuni carburetor if you are looking to install one of those. So here are the four tools you're gonna need if you're gonna be removing a carburetor. You're gonna need a set of needle nose pliers, a regular set of uh, pliers, and then you're gonna need an eight mil and uh, a 10 mil wrench. So when we first come in here to look at removing the carb, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at these two tubes that we have here. So we're looking at here is the fuel line and we're gonna go ahead and pull it off. Uh, if, you're, if you're removing your stock carb, you're gonna wanna pull it off on the carb side because you're gonna wanna keep this rubber hose uh, to use it to put onto your Makuni carb as you see here. So go ahead and pull that off on the carburetor side. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off on the fuel side uh, just cause it's gonna be a little bit easier. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a set of my needle nose pliers. We're just gonna come up onto this little clamp here. Go ahead and pull that guy off. Now fuel is gonna come out of this, so I'm just gonna grab a rag here and be prepared for a little bit of fuel to spill off. Make sure you have your fuel turned off as well. So I've got my little rag here. And we're just gonna come here and I'm just gonna pull on it a little bit. There you go, there's a little bit of fuel come out. Not much, if anything, there was a little bit of fuel that came out of the fuel line there. Uh, as well as when you are pulling the carburetor off, there's gonna be a little bit more fuel inside the carb itself. So now we've got our fuel line off. Uh, next is, we have on your stock carb, so ignore this regular pink wire, or ignore this pink tube here. This is just off a of Makuni carb, uh, and this is just a vent. So if you're on your stock carburetor still, this pink one won't be here. You'll just have this secondary line here, which is also just a breather tube. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to where it is in the bottom here. Uh, and I have it just uh, zip tied together from the two lines together. So the first one, I'm just gonna pull and slide it out of the zip tie as well let's see if we can get the second one out here pull this sucker up and out so now i've got our two vent tubes so now we've got our first and our second vent tube those are both disconnected as well as our fuel line is disconnected now all that we have left to remove is going to be two 10 millimeter slash eight millimeter bolt and nuts you're going to need a 10 millimeter here and an eight millimeter here and there's one on each side, on the opposite side. And we're just gonna pop those two out. Uh, and then all that's gonna be left is, that's holding it on is going to be the throttle linkage, uh, which you can't really see, right? Up in there, up inside this rubber boot that I'm pointing to too. That's where your throttle linkage is. Okay, and now our entire carb is loose. And we have play, we can move it. I'm gonna pull that last bolt out. Uh, now, Everything is loose. The last and most importantly is going to be taking off this collar which houses the throttle linkage cable that goes up to the actual throttle on the handlebar. So all we're gonna do is take these guys here and we're just gonna grab this like so and turn it uh, counterclockwise and loosen it. It should be loose enough to grab by hand. And then be warned that when you do open this, there is spring tension on it, so it's gonna pop open. Uh, and there is some stuff inside of it. So this guy's gonna come apart here. And inside of that, we're gonna have our spring uh, and our throttle cable, and then this collar. And there we go, and all this stuff. So when you're looking at this here, saying, well, how do I get that apart? Down this line here, 
that's where your throttle is sitting down. So what we're gonna do, go ahead and compress this. And you can see the throttle pokes out. And then we're gonna get on the outside of the slide and slide it all the way up. There you go. Now you have your needle off. And as well as this will pop off. All right, so now we are up on the bench here. Here is the Makuni carburetor. Uh, first thing to note, when you are upgrading to the Makuni carburetor, you, uh, you wanna ditch this guy here. So this guy here, this is the original air filter that comes on your stock carburetor. You wanna ditch this guy right away. And you wanna get one of these UNI uh, air filters. Uh, and as well as you want to make sure you are using some of this foam filter oil. Yeah, you wanna make sure you are using some sort of uh, filter oil inside of this filter, because if you just run it dry, uh, you're gonna suck dust in and you're gonna blow your engine up. So best bet is to just get some of this oil and do things right the first time. So upgrade to one of these carbs. Uh, if you're gonna, it, when you upgrade to one of these carbs, make sure you get one of these UNI filters. Uh, it's a two-stage foam filter, it's removable. So there's a couple things you need to know about the carb uh, while we got here, because if you take this carb as is stock out of the box and you throw it into your uh, Apollo or whatever uh, Chinese brand dirt bike, it probably won't run all that great. If it does run, you got lucky, great, good for you. Nine out of 10 people, this isn't gonna just directly bolt on and just run out of the box uh, perfectly, which is, I know that might suck for you and it might be a barrier where you're thinking, oh, I don't know how to work on carbs. I don't wanna have to tinker with it. I'll just leave the stock carb. I don't know either, but we are learning together uh, and I've gone through and learned some things about this. So I'm going to share my knowledge with you guys and hopefully this can help you get your carb set up uh, and dialed in. So there's a few, uh, few couple things to note about this carb. So let's get familiar with what we are looking at here. Here's your fuel line. This is gonna be your fuel. This one is just a vent, which has the pink original tube, which is just going to be breathed uh, to atmospheric so this doesn't need to be wired into somewhere else it's just gonna go down to the ground which I'll show you how to put that in as well then you're gonna have this bottom piece which is also just a breather so that one's also just gonna go out to the ground and uh, atmospheric so that doesn't need to get wired in the only real thing you need to wire wire in the only thing you need to plumb in is the fuel line so you're just gonna connect the fuel line here is a two-stage choke so up is going to be choke on. Uh, this is the top of the bike here if we're pretending. Uh, so it's going to be up is choke on, down is choke off. If I take the carb, flip it over. Now we're looking at the other side. Uh, here is going to be your idle adjustment screw. So it's, I got greasy hands. Right here is your idle adjustment screw. Uh, so this is just going to change the idle uh, from say zero RPM to 1500 RPM to set the bike's idle when it's just sitting there. So that you might have to play with. You're gonna turn your bike on uh, once this is installed and you'll just find the sweet spot of where your bike likes to idle nicely at. Uh, and you're gonna be worried about finding a nice idle uh, when it's warmed up. So we'll get your bike warmed up, then find the idle that you like. Uh, and then that's where you can set your idle screw. Next most important two things to note. Some carburetors uh, come with fuel mixture screws, some come with air mixture screws, and this is gonna be where you're tuning your carburetor, which is gonna be really important. So if we're looking at the carburetor from how it'd be installed in the bike, this is gonna be the back side of the bike, here's gonna be the front of the bike. So from here on out, we're gonna refer to this as the filter side of the carburetor and the intake side of the carburetor. So on the filter side of the carburetor, we're gonna have an air, air mixture screw normally on carburetors, which would be located somewhere here underneath it. This carb does not have an air filter screw. So the only adjustments you can make with this, and if you have this installed on your bike currently, you won't be able to reach it. But if we take the carb and we look at the bottom side, so here's the bottom, if you're looking at inside your bike, this is gonna be towards the ground. So we're gonna look at the bottom side of the carb. And on the bottom side, I'll zoom you guys in here, up inside of that piece of the metal, here's your fuel mixture screw. So this is gonna add or take away fuel to your fuel mixture ratio, right? As you try and find that stoich, which is the correct fuel mixture where uh, there's equal parts fuel, uh, I think it's 14 or somewhere around 12.7 to 14 roughly is where you wanna be, uh, where you're leaning out enough that you're getting power, because if you just, too much fuel, you're just bogging. So if you have, issues where you are bogging, it might be that your Makuni carb uh, is got having too much fuel. 
uh, so it is just bogging out because there is just too much fuel being put into the carb uh, as well as it could be leaning out uh, and it caused some stuttering issues as well. So you can play with your fuel mixture screw which is on the underside of the carburetor here. Okay, now we're here looking at the slide with the needle that goes inside the carburetor which would normally go into this tube. Okay, so now this is where your next set of adjustments can come in. So we're gonna simply push on the bottom of the needle and this little retaining spring-like clip is gonna come out of it. Don't lose that, we're gonna need that for later. We're just gonna sit that down here. Now, if we take this needle outside, this is gonna be your throttle needle. So, let's see if we can zoom in here on this. More fully zoomed, where do we go? Now, you see how there's grooves inside of now I don't know if you guys can see that but there are grooves inside of this pin that is the throttle pin and this clip that's on it can sit on different levels there's five different there's one two three four five different little stages of where this clip there's little tiny ridges in there depending on where this clip sits is going to depict on how far down the needle sits inside of this slide when you go to activate the throttle on where it's pulling it up. So in my instance, first and second gear, the bike seems to run fine and it seems to run smoothly and it pulls throughout the gear fine. But when you get up into the third and fourth gear, what tends to happen is you go to give a throttle to say, brap over a, a pothole or something like that. And uh, as you're going, you go to give it throttle and the bike seems to bog. So what we're gonna do to remedy that is if we look on this clip, the throttle needle is all the way down to the second lowest uh, clip here. So if I go ahead and I grab the stock carburetor, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try and we're gonna do some trial and error here because I haven't figured out which way we have to move this clip on the pin uh, to make this better and fix our third and fourth gear issue, which I believe we need to take this clip and step it up towards the top end so it's closer to the same length as this needle uh, as I don't think it's opening or maybe it's it's opening the throttle to give it too much fuel too soon and it's bogging out when you're in those higher RPM screaming and revving it out is what my theory is so we're gonna take this little clip here and we're gonna pop it up I think two notches uh, and then we're gonna reassemble the entire carb and uh, then we'll go from there and then we'll start playing with our fuel mixture screw. All right, and just like that, now we have our clip. Uh, it's gone up two notches. And then we will go ahead and reassemble this. So to reassemble it, all we're gonna do, figure out which one's the bottom, which is this side. This is the top, the big hole. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and slide the needle side into the top, down into the hole. Boop. And that guy slides down in there and hangs out. So we're gonna wanna go ahead and grab a flathead screwdriver. Uh, and this is gonna be used, and we're gonna go ahead and find out where our uh, fuel screw is. So we're gonna go in half turn increments uh, and try and screw all the way in. So we're gonna be going clockwise here and screwing it in. So let's see where we're at. Half, one, half, two. So we're at two. People were saying between two and two and a half clicks out is where you want to be. No, we'll stick it right at two because that's where I think we need to be is two and we just need to simply change our needle. So we're going to go ahead, leave it at two, two full turns out, uh, counterclockwise out. So screw it all the way in and then two out. You got to slide the spring and pull it back enough until the piece of the throttle is sticking out of the bottom like so. And then you have to slide that down the side of this collar and get it to lock in through the bottom and lock the spring on there. So sorry if you can't see that this well, but this is kind of a tough part to do with the spring because it just wants to spring back out at you. Ah, bugger. All right, so there we got the little butt. And this we're gonna need to just lock in the ass part right there. Boom, if you can see that, you're gonna slide that in the groove. And then pull the spring back. I'm 
Come on, Yasaka. Get the spring. There you go, down in the hole. There you go, now you got a springed piece. So that's all together again. That's all under sprung pressure. I'm gonna go ahead, stick this, slide this down inside the carb. Once again, it's keyed, so it'll only go in one way. And then we're gonna get this and screw this back on. Okay. And you can grab your pliers once more. You can grab the top here. And we're just gonna make sure this guy's nice and snugged up so your throttle doesn't come springing apart on the trail or something funny. So now we're gonna go ahead and slide and wiggle our carb back up into place. Uh, and line it up here. Then we're gonna go ahead and stick our eight mil bolts back through the hole here. All right, and then we're gonna take our 10 millimeter nuts. So we're gonna go ahead and take our fuel line here. We'll go ahead and slide the fuel line back on. And we're gonna grab our little clip here to make sure that it doesn't pop off. Slide that back on over. Then we got our little line down here. We're gonna go ahead and stick this OEM little sort of protecting thing. I don't even know what it is or if it really matters, but we're gonna go ahead, slide that sucker back on, stick that in a little hole here. Now we've got that back on and attached. And then all that's left is we're gonna go ahead, take that pink hose. There's a fat end and the skinny end. We're gonna take the fat end and shove it up onto this vacuum. And we're gonna feed this down and into the skid plate for venting. And just like that, now you have reinstalled your Makuni carburetor. So if, like I said, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them down in the comments below and uh, I will try my best to answer them. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something about the carburetors. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I will answer them and I will help you get your carburetor set up. Uh, if you didn't figure out what you needed to do from this video, which I hope you did. Uh, make sure to subscribe for more content because we will be going over how to change your gear ratios uh, and how to change the actual sprockets in the bike uh, so you can make your bike a bit more acceleration or have some more top end. But uh, yeah, till next time guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like button and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.